Maria. I wanted to get out of there and away from whatever I had just seen. Maria? Lily likes you. I knew I'd seen a ghost. Henry, did you say something? I just figured it was a normal thing kids did at that age. Help me. Will you marry me? Yes. That was the point when I really started to question my own sanity. Maria, who are you talking to? Billy. Should I have told him his dead wife was still in the house? I couldn't understand it. Why would they buy the house? I was on winter break from college my junior year. My dad had just bought his new house a few months before, so it was my first time visiting. I want you to behave for your big sister, OK? I want you to listen to her, and I want you to go to bed on time if she tells you. Got it? My dad and my stepmom were going out of town for three days to go skiing right before Christmas. So they asked me to watch my half-sister Maria while they were gone. You OK with this? Yeah. I'll see you soon. She's, she's just quiet. Yeah, I know. She's that way. Don't take it personal. Try to bond with her. I want you guys to be sisters, not just half-sisters. You will. Maria was born when I was in junior high. I was living with my mom back then, so I'd only seen her a handful of times during the holidays. So my dad really wanted us to get to know each other. Bye, hon. Bye, Dad. No smoking. OK. Maria, what are you doing? Drawing. No, I meant who are you talking to? Billy. She had dozens of drawings all around her room of this figure with blonde hair and a blue face. OK. But I didn't really think much of it at the time. Well, let's go figure out what we can have for dinner. It didn't surprise me that she had an imaginary friend. So what do you feel like eating? Pizza. I mean, she was an only child, and I just figured it was a normal thing kids did at that age. Pizza. Pepperoni? Yes. All right. I had just walked up the stairs two minutes ago and I'm pretty sure that drawing wasn't there. At least, I didn't remember seeing it. Is this you? No, it's you. Billy likes you. OK, let's go order pizza. Maria was a very quiet kid. It was really hard to have conversations or to bond with her. But 
She did like talking about her imaginary friend. So what does Billy like to do for fun? He likes to swing. Ah, oh, just like you. Where's Billy right now? He was just over there, but he went inside. Oh, really? Hey, it's getting cold. Let's go inside. OK. Maria? It took me a minute to realize it was only a dream, but it just felt so real. Maria's voice sounded like it was coming from the attic, but the door was locked from the outside. Maria? Are you up here? I could have sworn I heard Maria's voice calling me from the attic. So how did she end up behind me two seconds later, pulling my hair? Can I have a glass of water? Yeah. It was late, and I was still pretty shaken up from the nightmare, so <sighs> come on. I just figured it was all in my head. The next day went by, and Marie and I pretty much just stuck to ourselves. We just weren't connecting. Thankfully, my dad was supposed to get home later that night. Okay, so where are the ornaments? I don't know. Where would you guess? Maybe the attic. Okay. Well, you got this under control? All right, I'll be right back. I have to admit, after what had happened the night before, I really wasn't looking forward to going up to the attic by myself. So I just wanted to find the ornaments and get out of there. But I really had no clue where anything was.
it's not funny. Open the door. Maria? Open this door right now. Maria, it's not funny. Maria, why did she do that? I did not do that. Oh, let me guess, Billy did it. You know, I don't care who did it. Don't let it happen again. They're swinging, like Billy. Why would you do this? I didn't. Oh, who did it? Billy. Billy did not do this. He's not real. Yes, he is. No, he's not. This isn't funny. It's not cute. At that point, I was so sure it had been her messing with me this entire time. Pulling my hair, calling my name in the middle of the night. And now she'd put those dolls up while I was in the attic. You know what, go sit down in there. Come on, go. I'm gonna go get the other box. I was so annoyed with her, but if I just stopped to think about it, I would have questioned how she did all that so quickly. Even if she'd stood on a chair, how'd she reach up that high? I was terrified and I wanted to get out of there and away from whatever I had just seen, but it was so dark. she was okay. I told my dad about everything I saw that weekend. He didn't think anything of it until I told him about the man I saw hanging in the attic. The last owner of this house, their son committed suicide here. Hung himself or something. They're swinging like Billy. What? I couldn't understand it. Why would they buy the house? We're not superstitious. 
We just didn't say anything because we didn't want Maria to freak out. Even though I knew the answer, I had to ask him. What was the son's name? The one who killed himself? Um, William, William. Who are you talking to? Billy. Billy likes you. Oh, who did it? Billy? Listen, you cannot tell your little sister about this, OK? Has she not told you about Billy? All right, so what's the big surprise? The surprise? Henry and I had only been dating about nine months when he told me he had this huge surprise waiting for me at his house. The surprise is? This beautiful house he had inherited from his family. I know this is quick, but I know that I love you. Will you marry me? I knew it was fast, but the way I felt about Henry, I'd never felt that before with anyone. Yes. Ugh. It was a pigeon. It had flown into the window and broken its neck. At the time, I thought it was just a freak accident. <sighs> when I woke up the next morning, my ring finger was red and swollen. I couldn't get the ring off my hand. I thought it might be a bug bite or some kind of allergic reaction. I needed to get the ring off. Some soap and warm water did the trick. I heard what sounded like the bedroom door slam shut, but Henry had already left for work. I told myself it was an old house with drafty windows and warped doors, and I left it at that. I try not to let a couple of weird things bother me. I really wanted to enjoy setting up our new house. The house was beautiful, but it felt cold and impersonal. I thought it needed a woman's touch. It was going to be our home, and I wanted it to feel that way. So what do you think? What do I think about what? Well, the changes I've been making in the house. <laughs> I didn't realize what a bachelor pad this place was. 
wasn't that bad. No, it was. It looks good. Yeah? Yeah, I really like them. What the hell? How did it get all the way over there? That's like 10 feet. I don't know. Maybe the nail was too small and it fell off the wall and tumbled across the floor. Tumbled? I don't know. Weirder things have happened. No, weirder things hadn't happened. But I wasn't going to make a big deal out of it yet. A few nights later, we were asleep when a sound woke me up. I know it sounds crazy, but I could have sworn I saw a woman in a wedding gown walking out of our bedroom. Sorry. I had to. <laughs> There's no one down there. Henry said he checked the entire house. Every door, every window, everything was locked. No one was there. He convinced me that I was still half asleep. I saw someone. And we left it at that. But after that, I was wide awake. The next morning, I was exhausted. Hey, 
Mm -hmm. I have to go to work. Mm -hmm. You look nice. Thank you. Did you get any sleep last night? No. Okay, I'm gonna be home late. I have a late meeting. Okay, not too late. Not too late. You forgot your phone. Are you okay? That was the point when I really started to question my own sanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew I saw a woman inside his car. I started thinking that maybe the stress of the engagement and the move was just too much for me. I couldn't say it out loud or even to myself, but I knew I'd seen a ghost but there was no way I was gonna tell that to Henry and sound like a lunatic. That night, Henry got home late and tossed his bag on the coffee table. I could see a picture of someone sticking out. I wondered the same thing anyone would wonder in that moment. Why did my fiance have a picture of some other woman in his bag? Hey, what are you doing? Nothing. Found this. Who is she? It's Susan. Who's Susan? She was my wife. Your wife? I had no idea that Henry had ever been married. What are you, divorced? No. She died. I didn't tell you because I didn't want to scare you off. How'd she die? She fell down the stairs. Here? I was so angry that he kept this from me. And in the meantime, I feel like I'm going crazy. Okay. She was there. What's wrong? Nothing. I know I saw her standing right in front of me. Nothing. But how would I have explained that? I just found out about her, and now I thought I was seeing her in the house. He'd think I was crazy.
from that point on, I found reasons to never be alone in the house that night. Can we talk? It was some woman I'd never met before, but she seemed frightened of something, so I went outside to talk to her. Are you Henry's fiance? Yes. Well, look, um, I used to be their neighbor. I was Susan's friend. Uh, I'm sorry, Henry, I'm sorry. I think you might be in danger. <laughs> Excuse me? Look, I don't know how much he told you, but Susan's death, it, it was no accident. He killed her for the house and the money. This is really crazy. I I'm going to have to ask you to leave. I Henry doesn't even need the money, and this house has been in his family for years. The house was Susan's. Look, I just thought you should know. I'm sorry. She put a newspaper clipping in my hand and left. I couldn't imagine why he'd hide something like this from me. Well, I, I guess I could, but I wouldn't let myself. After everything that had happened, I could have just packed my bags and left. But I loved him, and I had to stay until I heard his side of the story. I thought this was your family's house. It is. Not Susan's? Susan was my family. Yeah, well, you didn't say you were accused of killing your wife. I know this must be a shock for you, but please just let me explain. <laughs> I don't know why I thought I could keep this a secret. It's stupid. I was upstairs taking a shower. She fell down the stairs and broke her neck. Henry had all the answers. After she died, I inherited the house and the estate. I swear to you, Laura, I did not kill my wife. I really wanted to believe him. Please just, can we go in the other room and sit down? and have a drink, and I'll answer any questions you want me to. I'll tell you everything. Please. I listened, but it was also hard to comprehend. That night, I laid in bed next to him, staring at him for about three hours. I just couldn't sleep, so I thought I'd go downstairs and watch some TV. My fiance's dead wife very clearly told me to look in that nightstand, just as plainly as I just said it. So, yeah, I was gonna look in the nightstand.
I didn't even know how to process what I was looking at. Henry had taken out a massive life insurance policy in my name and made himself the beneficiary. Does that mean he killed his wife? You tell me. I don't feel good. Why? You don't like me. No, it's not that. I didn't believe in ghosts or the paranormal or any of it. There was just something about the guy in the picture. Hello? You never take objects out of haunted locations. Is someone there? Something about that photo was starting to creep me out. At that point, I had to tell Jessica what was going on. Go ahead, take me home with you. I knew at that moment I had seen a ghost. There was something dark in that house. I was definitely a skeptic. So creepy. I didn't believe in ghosts or the paranormal or any of it. Oh, wow. Where did you find this place? But my girlfriend Jessica was obsessed with all that unexplained stuff. We'd been together for a little over a year when she convinced me to go on a, an investigation with her and her friend Jeff. Is there anyone down here? Can anyone hear me? What was that? Probably just Jeff. Jeff, what you doing up there? Not doing a thing. Can you hear that? I heard it too. I thought it was you. Never mind, we'll be up in a few minutes. Copy, Al. Are you okay? Yep, yep. You sure? Yeah. yeah. I just slipped on something. Be careful. Ready? You wanna go upstairs? Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure why I put the thimble in my pocket in the first place. But something about taking it home with me just didn't feel right. Did you have fun today? Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It was. Kind of creepy. Just weird old building. I definitely felt a presence. You know, like we weren't the only ones there. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't see anything, but it was weird noises. Definitely wouldn't want to spend the night there. You were scared.
the clock had stopped and the second hand was making this weird clicking sound. Are you okay? Why, why did you scream? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I just, I just had this really bad dream, and you weren't here, and then... Why'd I you just... lock the door? I didn't lock the door. I didn't want to scare her, so I didn't make too big of a deal about it. Let's go back to bed. I figured I probably closed the door behind me and it jammed. I could feel the cuts on my face, but I convinced myself that my mind had been playing tricks on me. It was the only logical explanation at the time. The first thing I thought was that something was seriously wrong with me. It was like full-on hallucinations. Two in one day. I tried to sleep it off. Are we still going to your parents' place for dinner this weekend? but I couldn't stop thinking about it. Jess, I don't feel good. Why? You don't like me? No, 
No, it's not that. It's just... What? Just a bad dream. I remember thinking, if one more thing happens, I'm checking myself into the hospital. How did the thimble even get into my house? At that point, I had to tell Jessica what was going on. What is that? I found it at the brothel. You're not supposed to take stuff from those places. I didn't bring it home. I left it there, but I found it under the bed tonight. What? I don't know, Jess. Something's going on. I've been having lots of visions. Visions of blood, and I saw a woman in our bed last night. Is that why you were acting all crazy? I'm not crazy. When Tim told me about the things that he'd been seeing... You were just acting really strange. I couldn't help but wonder if it had to do with that thimble. So I went back and I started looking at the pictures from the investigation a few nights before that. Oh my God, Tim, you need to see this. It looked like a woman standing in the middle of the basement. Tim, you're not gonna believe this. Are you seeing this? Tim, you're not gonna believe this. Are you seeing this? When I came to, he had just disappeared. I knew at that moment I had seen a ghost. I'm definitely hearing. After Jessica told me what she had seen, she suggested that we call a psychic for help. It's two voices, man and a woman. Normally, I would have had a hard time buying anything he was saying. But what did I have to lose at that point? I loved her. Very violent love. She's rejecting him. She calls him a penniless pig. And... He felt a female spirit that had been a prostitute and a male spirit that was in love with her. If I can't have her, no one can. He saw this male spirit going into a jealous rage and murdering the prostitute. Is it still here? Is what still here? An object. It's small. It's um, metal. It's something dear to her. Very, very small. Um, oh. I need to pick that with me. I have to find that. 
It is the only way to release their souls. Why is it important? It's how they met. How they met? What do you mean? Uh, back in that era, the women of the brothel would be inside with a symbol on their finger as the men passed on the street, the women would tap, tap at the glass. Since that symbol was what started their relationship in the first place, he believed that if he removed it from our house, that the activity would stop. He lit some sage to help cleanse the house. I just hoped that all of it would work. I wanted things to go back to normal. But something about how it all happened didn't quite add up. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. I, mean, I had the thimble, but I threw it back down in the basement. I, I thought about it, bringing it home, but something brought it here. Someone I'm you want another beer? Yeah, I, yeah. I do. Thanks. So what if you really didn't bring the thimble home? And what if he followed me or she followed you? What if she followed you and he followed her? And the thimble doesn't mean anything. And now they're just here. My husband, Tony, and I just moved into our new house in Florida when I got the news. My doctor had found a small tumor in one of my breasts. I was waiting for the results of the biopsy, but they wouldn't be back for a week. Hey, babe. Hey. Uh, it's that time again. Tony was leaving for a business trip that week. I knew he had a lot on his mind, and I didn't want to worry him if the biopsy turned out to be negative. Promise. I can't wait. Or maybe I didn't tell him because I was afraid to say it out loud. Car's here. I got to go. OK. Miss you. Bye. Bye. Tony's job forced us to relocate a few times. He was always traveling. So I'd gotten used to being alone in new cities with no friends and family around. But dealing with this cancer scare alone made this move even harder. days after we moved in, I was walking around our new neighborhood, and I came across this garage sale a few blocks down. 
Hidden behind the other frames was this photograph that just kind of jumped out at me. There was just something about the guy in the picture. Go ahead, take me home with you. Oh, is that you in the picture? That's funny, I thought it was an antique. Frame is, picture's not. Huh, it's a cool frame. What's your name? Marissa. Marissa. What do you think, Marissa? It's a great frame. Five bucks. It's probably worth way more than that. Plus, I'll throw in the cool photo. It's a steal. I wouldn't say he was flirting. Okay. Exactly. You got a deal. Great. But whatever he was doing, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little flattered. Tell you what, you seem like a nice girl. Take it. Really? Yeah, take it, it's yours. Wow. Have fun with it. Needs a nice home. Thank you. I still had a few days to wait for my biopsy results, and I couldn't stop thinking about them. So I tried just about anything to relax. Go ahead, take me home with you. Oh, is that you in the picture? You seem like a nice girl. Take it. I told myself I had fallen asleep in the tub, and that I had dreamt the whole thing. The lights turning on, getting pulled under, seeing that man. And I was so nervous and stressed out that it, it kind of made sense. Removing that frame. I was trying to figure out how it got there when I felt something moving under the covers. See, it ain't the snakes that's the problem, it's the stupid people that get them. They act like they're pets, and then they can't care for them. Instead of doing the right thing, they let them go, and that's why we're overrun with the damn things. OK, but where did it go? Well, that's the bad news, is I think it's living in your walls. But I ain't seen no sign of a nest or nothing, so he can't have spent too much time in the house yet. <laughs> Don't worry. I know they'll scare you, but they ain't that dangerous. You have a good day now.
I wondered if maybe the exterminator moved it when he was checking the house. That photo was starting to creep me out. So I decided to take it back. What? Um, hi. Is your son home? Huh? I'm sorry. You had a garage sale here a couple days ago? I bought this here. The guy in the picture actually sold it to me. I was just wondering if I could speak with him? I've never seen that picture or the man in it before in my life. I thought about just throwing the photo in the trash, but I told myself I was being ridiculous and tried to forget all about it. I focused my energy into unpacking and getting the house ready for when Tony got back. the exterminator again. I don't think I understand what you're suggesting. Well, miss, what I'm saying is I don't see any signs of any insects in the house, especially not a swarm like you're talking about. I've checked, there's no access point, there's no exit point, so if there was a swarm of insects in the room, I'd be able to tell, you know what I'm saying? Never mind, you have a good day. Was I imagining things? And if I was, what was causing it? I was afraid that I already knew the answer to that one. wrapped around my arms. He was there, holding me down. And then suddenly, he was just gone. I didn't know what to do. I was afraid I'd gone insane, and I was scared to tell my husband. I was raised Catholic and still held on to my beliefs. At a time like that, I figured it couldn't hurt. My hand was burned, like I held it to a hot iron. That's when I knew I wasn't imagining this. The snake, the swarm of bugs, the crucifix. There was something dark in that house. Coming! 
Tony and I had only been at the church in town once or twice at that point. I didn't know what else to do, so I asked the priest to come to the house. So, what is it that brought about your call? Uh, Father, there's been some things going on around here that are um, a little hard for me to understand. And what sort of things? Um... It's okay. My job is to listen, not to judge. <sighs> I've been having these visions. There's a man. He keeps showing up in my dreams. And then when I wake up, I don't feel like I've been dreaming. And it's starting to get so I don't know what's real and what's not anymore. Tell me about this man. He's from a picture. And then I was putting up a crucifix this afternoon. And all of a sudden, it. You know, this is a new home. How about I give it a blessing while you gather your thoughts? Sure. OK. okay. this house to cleanse it when you know it's your soul that needs cleansing what i saw that man in your bed terrified who or what was in my house. I decided to tell my husband everything. And I wasn't going to go back into that house until he got home. Tony, it's Marissa. I need you to call me back as soon as you can, all right? There's some stuff that's been going on around here, and I really need to talk to you. Tony? Hello? Tony, is that you? to see you. Oh, there's been so much going on. I just called to tell you to come home. Why'd you decide to come home early anyway?
How dare you? I saw that man in your bed. Oh, I've never been so happy to see you. Why'd you decide to come home early anyway? for a second. And he was gone. I didn't sleep that night. I stayed awake hoping Tony might actually come home early. But he didn't. When the sun came up, I got up enough courage to leave the bedroom. Up until then, I was convinced that a photograph couldn't possibly be causing all of this. But then I stopped lying to myself. look happier to see me. You have no idea. I missed you. I missed you too. How'd your trip go? It was a whirlwind. I don't think I got four hours of sleep any night. Jeez. Hey, what was that message you left me last night all about? You know, we don't have to talk about it tonight. It's late, you're tired. I knew that I didn't have proof to show him. And if I started telling him about what I had seen, I would have to tell him about the tumor also. You coming in? Yeah. And why I hadn't told him in the first place. It was about three o'clock in the morning. Tony? When this noise woke me up. Tony? inside there. It looked like something else was inside him, looking back at me. Yes, hi, I need an ambulance immediately. My husband's sick. Yes, that's my address. Please hurry. I did the only thing I could think of. I can't explain who he was or explain how or why any of it happened. All I know is that as soon as I burned that picture, 
it all stopped. Dream house. We hadn't been living in the house for more than two weeks when the accident happened. The cabin was in the middle of nowhere. Total isolation. Someone there? He just disappeared. <laughs> the boy did it. Caitlin and I were living every parent's worst nightmare. Charlie! Me. Sorry. <laughs> Spaghetti for dinner, huh? After about a year of what seemed like never-ending construction, Caitlin and I finally moved into our new house. It was our dream house. We built it from the ground up on this huge plot of land. How was your day? You have no idea how glad I am it's Friday. <laughs> Our daughter, Haley, fell out of the second story window, and we couldn't understand how it happened. Was she alone? No. Did he say anything? No. She was really lucky. Just broken legs and some bruises. It could have been worse. She'll recover. Yeah. We hadn't been living in the house for more than two weeks when the accident happened. Caitlin and I were devastated. Yeah, there we go. Look, you are all set up in the living room. Our kids are like night and day. <laughs> Haley's always the calmest kid in the room. It's gonna be fun. But Charlie was <laughs> insanely hyperactive. So it doesn't hurt, right? All right, buddy. Oh, okay, buddy. Hey. Okay. Charlie, okay. no, 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 no. Only daddy can do that, okay? Most of the time, I just kind of found it funny. Figured he was going through a phase. Maybe right. gentle. You gotta be nice to your sister, okay? Me? Caitlin had a harder time dealing with it. must have accidentally bumped the table or something. What happened? Nothing. A stupid accident. 
What's wrong? Haley said Charlie pushed her. When, just now? No. She said he pushed her out the window. What? Yeah. She said she's sure of it. She said she felt him put his hands on her back and then he shoved her. He wouldn't do that. I believe her. You see how rowdy he gets? We both wanted to believe that there was a logical explanation for why Haley would say that. <laughs> that there was no way Charlie would actually do something like that. I'll go talk to him. No matter how hyper he was. But at the same time, Haley wasn't the type of kid who would lie or make up stories. I had never heard Charlie whistle before. I didn't even know he could do it. Hey, pal, what you doing? under the bed. <laughs> There's no one under your bed, buddy. You want me to check? What you doing? He's under the bed. <laughs> There's no one under your bed, buddy. You want me to check? <laughs> There was no one there. I need to talk to you, bud. All right? Come here. So the other day, when you were in the playroom with your sister, when she had her accident, did you push Haley? Sorry, you can be honest with me, buddy. It's just, I know you'd never hurt your sister on purpose. You can tell me if it was an accident, okay? Dad, I didn't do it. She said she was pushed. Why would she say that? Charlie. The boy did it. I was sure Charlie was blaming what happened on an imaginary boy so that he wouldn't get in trouble. All right, bye. But there was another part of me that wondered if there was some other explanation for what was going on inside that house. No, I didn't push my sister. 
It's not fair to him. He, my little friend. All the time. What? He said he didn't do it. So he stays in the closet all the time. Paul was just trying to protect Charlie. But we had to take what Haley said seriously, and I just didn't feel like Paul was. He's five. He knows he's in trouble, so he blamed it on an imaginary boy. How can he not see that this is a problem and he needs counseling? He's hyperactive. A lot of kids are hyperactive. Not many nearly kill their siblings. Everything pointed to Charlie doing it. But something about that didn't seem right. So I just, I kept looking for another explanation. There was no way Charlie had drawn that picture, and I had no idea who had. I decided not to tell Caitlin. I didn't have an explanation for it, and I didn't want her to start worrying about Charlie any more than she already was. I wanted to ask him about it myself. Hey, bud. This was in the drawings under your bed. It doesn't look like one that you did. Who did this one? The boy did it. What boy? The boy in the closet. Uh, what are you talking about, buddy? Is that the same boy that pushed your sister? Yeah. Charlie, there is no boy in your closet. He's not in there now because you're here and he doesn't like you. I'm sure this is all confusing for you, I just... Good night, son. Love you. And hey, why doesn't the boy like me? You look like Maynard. Who's Maynard? I convinced myself that a draft from an open window had pushed the ball out of the playroom. Kind of like I convinced myself to ignore the whistling in Charlie's closet. It had been a really rough couple of days. I was stressed out. So I figured I just needed a good night's sleep.
Charlie! Dad! Hey, look, what happened? Charlie was in here. He was talking to someone. And then he heard the door open and he was gone. What's going on? Oh, wait, wait, who, who was he talking to? I don't know. It was dark. But I heard him talking. And then I heard the door open. What? How long ago? Just a few minutes. sheriff was there within half an hour. But we couldn't find Charlie anywhere. He just disappeared. We searched through the night. Charlie! And even though we were new to the area, the entire town came out the next morning to help us find him. Charlie! Fighting broke out overnight between Black Sea factions and Black Sea and Whaley and Syria and Warner. The initial reports of Whaley and Whaley jet fighters bombed in Portland Bay until the end of the 49th century. Caitlin and I were living every parent's worst nightmare. By the second night, we were really panicking. It became real. What do you smell? Thank you. you. Okay? Yeah. Oh, thank you, buddy. Oh, God. Sir? Yeah. Smith found him talking to himself by an embankment. He had this book bag with him. Doctor's on his way over to take a look at him. Thanks. That's not Charlie's bag. Can you tell us why you ran away? The boy wanted to show me something. What boy, Charlie? The boy who lives here. What's the boy's name? He calls himself Calvin. He doesn't like to be called Calvin. He says people tease him. But I'm his friend, so I call him Marty. I gotta sit down. Oh. Uh, should I make some coffee? Yeah, yeah. Calvin Martinson went missing. People called him Marty. Martinson, Marty. That was 30 years ago. Anyway, he, uh, 
He was walking home from school. He'd been expelled for graffitiing on the gymnasium wall. Now, the kid was a talented artist. And uh, I remember from town, he's a happy kid. He's always walking the streets, whistling to himself. And uh, bad home life, you know. Last time I saw him, he was walking right through these woods, uh, taking a shortcut to his stepdad's house. What do you mean in these woods? Well, right here, these were the woods. And, I mean, we searched for weeks, months for clues. We never did find him. I, I always suspect that his stepdad might have. What was his stepdad's name? Oh. Um, Maynard, yeah. You look like Maynard. At that point, I already knew. I knew everything Charlie had been saying was true. What's in the back? Hmm. Let's find out. I showed the drawing to Caitlin after the officer left. I told her everything that Charlie had said, everything I'd been seeing and hearing around the house. After that night, it all stopped. Haley got better, Paul stopped hearing the whistling, and Charlie never mentioned the boy again. Charlie's disappearance was the worst thing I've ever been through. But in the end, something good came out of it. Back in July of 2001, my divorce had just been finalized, and I was looking to make a fresh start. It's bigger than it looked in the picture. It's the same one. No, I know. It's just bigger than it looked. Well, your check cleared, so it's yours for the next six months. I'll be back for this in December. Or if I die, I'd be my daughter, Claire. I wanted to celebrate my freedom, so I found Xander's cabin online, and I cut a check to rent it for six months. I figured that was enough time for me to write the crime novel that I'd been pretending to work on for the 15 years before that. The cabin was in the middle of nowhere, and it looked like it hadn't been touched in years. But that's what I wanted, total isolation. But yours for the next six months. I'll be back for this in December. come alive at night when the sun goes down. You wouldn't worry too much, but you might want to keep that door. What? I... 
I told myself Xander was just old and weird, and I just brushed it off. I unpacked and started working right away. It's really hard when you realize your life hasn't turned out the way you thought it would. Here I was, 35 years old and starting all over. I'd always wanted to be a writer, but it just never worked out. So I became a teacher. I taught third grade, loved the kids, and wanted kids of my own. But he didn't. It was an old bell. Looked like, I don't know, maybe an old fire alarm. Honestly, the cabin was so full of old junk. I really didn't give it a second thought. It was suddenly freezing. My imagination must have been on overdrive or something. Despite how weird that first night in the cabin was, it actually felt great to be writing again. Carving looked fresh. Merry Christmas, Conrad. that I heard them as clearly as I hear my voice right now. Hello? Hello?
the deer was frozen solid. And as soon as I touched it, What I experienced that night made no sense. It was July. I mean, how could an animal just freeze to death? I didn't know what was happening to my hand. It was completely numb, like I had frostbite. I was terrified of the cabin. But there was no way I was gonna go back out there to leave. I kept all the lights on that night. I'm not sure how, but eventually I fell asleep. It was only two nights into the six months I had rented the cabin, and I was seriously questioning my sanity. And whether or not I could stay there for even one more night. But the next morning was sunny and beautiful, and I was actually getting a lot of writing done. I convinced myself that it had to be all in my head. So I decided to give it one more night. The day was the type of cloudy where you have no choice but to be in a grim mood. 
a day where strangers eye each other suspiciously for no other reason but the gray sky above them. where strangers eye each other suspiciously for no other reason but the gray sky above them. Is anyone there? you go. I don't remember thinking much, except that I needed to get out of there. It was after midnight. I didn't know where to go. The only place open was a bar. How's your mask on, Mule? Where do you think you are, hon? I, uh, um, I'll just have a vodka soda then. Sure. Thanks. What's the matter with you? I'm not sure what's going on with me. Um, or the place I'm renting. I, what place you rent? Uh, it's just a little cabin in the woods, like a couple minutes from here. Well, you're the one renting the schoolhouse, aren't you? You dealt with my dad, Xander? Yeah. Yeah, Xander. So you, you must be, um... Claire. Claire, right. Why did you call it the schoolhouse? That cabin you're in, it was built as a schoolhouse over 100 years ago. And then they closed it down after, uh... After what? Uh, two school kids, a little boy and a little girl, coming home after school. It was right before Christmas, and they got caught up in a snowstorm. They got lost in the woods and froze to death. Do you remember their names? Merry Christmas, Conrad. No. Like I said, it was a long time ago. She didn't have to tell me. I knew exactly what their names were. 